there it is, guys. It's a big one. I don't know if the video is going to do it justice. bought it it hasn't run for several years neither of the engines so i'm just going to go through them it's got two inline 671s in it i think it was i want to say 46 feet and pretty wide too, I don't know the measurements on it. Probably 14 feet maybe. Maybe more, I don't want to be wrong. But it's really tall. This one's pretty crazy over here by it. <laughs> it's a pirate ship. Skeleton. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. There's a little baby cat, Maria. I say baby only because it's smaller than Jeffrey's that we worked on. So I don't think we're going to get started until tomorrow. It's late in the day today. She needs a little work. So here we are, I'm down in the engine compartment here. We've got two inline 671s, T's. Um, they both have, uh, have not been run in a few years. So we're gonna see if we can get them going here. It says M95 injectors, and they're rated at six, uh, 450 horsepower each. That's for an inline 671. And they are turned up, it says, to maximum no load 2650 RPM. So no cooling issues because you're on a on a boat. In a bus, we would never get away with that much horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to run them in the winter. <laughs> yeah, that would be about it. With the extra fans hanging on it. One of these is supposed to have been rebuilt recently. Recently. Um, but by looking at them, it's not obvious which one. So we'll see as we get into it. Okay, so I have the valve cover off here on the port side engine, correct? Port, yes? Yeah, yeah. this is port. Um, and the entire rack is just seized. It's stuck in the full fuel position. So had, had she tried starting this, it would have definitely run away. So we have here, And this is the old style rack where each individual one is hooked. The new spring style individual ones, if one is stuck, then the other ones still work. But this engine would have run away had we tried to start it. So we're gonna go through, I'm gonna remove the rack and see if I can figure out which injector is stuck. And then go from there and start pulling injectors and see if they can be saved or not. I, I carry some spare injectors with me, but not this size. These are M95s, if that's what's labeled on the on the engine. And uh, that's a, a marine in, uh, injector that I don't typically carry. That's much larger. An, uh, an N65 is normally what's in a 671 for 238 horsepower. So the fact that this has been, you know, more than doubled the horsepower 
It's a big injector. Injectors here are free and moving. This one was stuck at first, but I wiggled it and then it got, it was really tight and then it got better. These all feel pretty good. I haven't turned it over yet, but this is the one that's stuck. It's completely seized there. I'll try to get it freed up. I'm gonna try and bar the engine over first. And I don't have a lot of clearance back here. But there's a bolt back there that I can turn it over. We'll see. Okay, so I got a bar on the engine there. Uh, wasn't very easy, and that is an inch and five sixteenths, in case you're wondering. <laughs> um, barred it over a couple times. All the injectors, the other ones are still moving, except for that first one is, is seized. This one that was moving really hard, it's moved, I've, anyways, I've, I've wiggled this one a whole bunch of times back and forth, like tipping it to the left and to the right while you do it. It's much more free than it was. So those are all moving, but this one here is not. So I'm pulled off the crossover, the uh, fuel, and I'm getting ready to pop the injector out of there and see what we got going on with it. Pull here, and then it goes up that way. And then way down there, there's a whole another the galley's down there, and another big berth. And then there's a, another big bedroom that goes down over that way. Not a very good tour from being down in the hole. This is about four and a half feet high that I'm standing to get to the engines here. This is with the top off on the one side. And then right now the top is still on this side. So those are the individual geared teeth for the injector that came out of it once we got it apart. So it's just, it's no good. Uh, and these are M15s, not 95s, like it was identified on the valve cover. It said M95, I believe is the number that it said on the valve cover. Yeah, M95 right there on the top of that it says. And these are M15, so it's even more horsepower than that. So we're on the starboard side engine now. Took the valve cover off, and this rack is giving me full movement. <laughs> so right now the injectors aren't stuck, but I gotta bar the engine over a couple revolutions to make sure it stays that way. So we'll see. It's pouring down rain again. And my bus is like a mile away. <laughs> At least it's covered for this part. Oh man. I'm soaked and I'm under a roof. But the roof leaks a little bit. There's my bus, can you see it? <laughs> That's it. At least it's not hailing. So I'm in the bus for lunch right now. Uh, it did stop raining finally. I have the uh, port side motor uh, has a bad injector in it and it's broken so we're sending that out we order are ordering a new one it'll be here tomorrow 
uh, from our buddy Troy at PC Industries. And then on the starboard side engine, uh, the rack moves freely. I borrowed the engine over a couple times and everything's moving. So that engine is ready to start. Uh, so hopefully in just a little bit on the next video, you'll see that engine running. And then when I get the parts for the other one, we'll get that one going. There's some problems with the throttle linkages that are rusted and seized up. So uh, I got to fight through that and stuff first and go from there. But uh, just to give you an idea where we're at with it. And one engine should be about ready to run. The other one will have the parts tomorrow to do, uh, get it back together. And then the throttle linkage issue, one of them's a throttle cable and there's a throttle synchronizer on there that matches the RPMs. Uh, so really you can just control the throttle on one and the synchronizer controls the throttle on the other. Uh, I got to make sure that all that is hooked up and linked and working. Uh, super awesome engines, the horsepower rating on them is crazy, the big injectors and all that. Uh, it should be fun and uh, stay tuned for another video after this one. Okay, so that throttle linkage is working and moving. It was disconnected. When I got here, this was off. Okay. Okay. Uh, you want to hand me that fire extinguisher too, just so I have fire it? So, so, so I just want it to turn over for like one second. I just okay. want to make sure that it does work. Okay. 1,001. Yeah. holding the rack in the off position. So I'm going to do that again. It did good. The engine's turning over. The starter's working. Let's go ahead and do it for uh, about five more seconds and then stop. I'm just trying to circulate some fuel through. I'm going to check it over for some leaks real quick. She's going to run. just want to make sure I got full control down here before I let this thing go. Real start, hopefully. I turned it back off. It was racing a little fast for what I wanted there. I don't like that at all. Stop! Don't do it anymore. Okay, don't don't do it anymore. Oh. <laughs> Not a problem? No, uh, the governor's spring is probably stuck. It's it's not. It didn't bring it back down to an idle. It just it was, it was going okay. much much faster RPM than it should have been. Uh -huh. So yeah, don't don't touch that again for a little while. <laughs> All right, so I thought it tried to run away, 
but really what happened is Pam had the engine set to full throttle. So when she started it, I, I had to pull it to the off position. Okay, so I started taking the governor apart. Uh, I'm not familiar with this specific throttle linkage that's on here. You know, normally the throttle linkage is on top of the governor on the buses. This is something a little different. But uh, in, in Pam's defense, this is a new, new boat to her. So uh, when she went to start it, she has the throttle levers in the full position. This is actually off. So when we tried to start it earlier, this was all the way back. And all the way back is that's full fuel. So I thought it was trying to run away. Every time I would let go of this, it wouldn't go to idle. It would just race way to hell up. And then I kept dialing it back down. It would race up. It wasn't going to an idle position. Well, that's because it was in full throttle. So uh, a heart attack later and some heart medication. I should be good. <laughs> we'll try and start this thing again. <laughs> uh, but that definitely gets your blood pumping when that happens. So I got it all put back together here. The shutdown should work. Um, yeah, the rack is in a much better position now too, fuel wise. When this is back, you can see it dials it in much higher fuel. But luckily I had the vice grips on there because that, that let me bring it down to shut it down. That's why you always want to start with vice grips on that fuel rack. The click that I heard was this charger turn on and that needle was pegged out way beyond 30 a minute ago, but it's coming down. So it's just charging the battery. So I just, I heard something, a real loud click. I just wanted to make sure that it was something normal. But we'll let that charge your batteries back up for a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and start it. Sounds nice. You see the oil starting to come up in between. People have always asked me where that comes from, how it oils. Very low oil pressure at idle. All right, so day two of working on the boat. Um, I got some more information that I didn't have before. Uh, uh, Pam told me today that that engine that I said was gonna run away because it had the, struck, the stuck injector on it. Uh, actually did run away for the previous owner is a story that she got that it ran away and all of a sudden tons of black smoke came pouring out of the back of the boat uh, which would have been the person who was working on it shutting it down the emergency flapper if you shut that off when it's running away it's still got full fuel and the engine's still you know turning over a lot so when that happens a ton of black smoke comes out so that that would make sense for that so that's the story that we just got uh, the stuck injector, once it ran away, they just gave up on it and it never got looked at again. Uh, so anyways, uh, today the injector is coming in and we're going to get that going and uh, we'll see, see what happens. So there's the engine through the floor. That's the one that we're replacing the fuel injector in and we just got our new fuel injector in PC Industries. They hooked us up, overnighted it to us. It's kind of a rare injector, I've not seen it before. And if I would have spent you know an hour on the phone, that was what the shipping cost was to have it overnighted. So it's better just, you know, it's only like, I think it was under $80 for the part itself. So hopefully we'll have this one going here in just a little bit. 0. 0.460. Put the new injector in and checked it with the pin. It seemed like it was really close, but it wasn't. It was like 1.464. And I did confirm that everything uh, I went and checked another one on here, and they are exactly 1460. So somebody probably used the correct gauge last time, too. Get that other really good with a pin. Just about have this one ready. Before we start, I got the vice grips on the rack. I can hold it in the off position. I'm going to hold it in the off position while he's turning it over for a little bit so that we circulate fuel through the head to prime everything. And then I've also confirmed that the emergency uh, shutoff flapper does work. So I can push this up, and you just heard it snap closed inside. Reset it, so now it's open. So if there was a runaway, I just got to lift up on that real hard. And uh, 
There's also a shut off on the fuel. So our water, seawater, is open. Um, everything looks good on this end. So I'm draining the bottom of the Davco here There's a, for water, and we definitely have some water in the fuel. That's what's in there. So I'm gonna drain some more. The water came out of the bottom. They did their job. We're gonna turn it over just to circulate some fuel through the head. It didn't. I heard it click. What? I heard yeah. it click, but it didn't turn over. Okay, come on down. Yeah, there's, there's something wrong with the starter. So go, go ahead and come on down. Shut that switch off. that time. Did you turn the switches back on? Yeah. They were on? Adventurous. This is our 
started a lot of my trucks. I wouldn't say he's adventurous, I say he's stupid. <laughs> disc from the starter and there's the contacts so I'll just get that cleaned up and should be good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun. Um, I'm, I'm happy that both engines on the on the boat are running now. Uh, a special thanks to our, our Patreon members. Uh, if you haven't been to our Patreon site, maybe go check it out. I'll put a link above. It's a way you can help support our channel. Uh, we just got a new uh, Wi-Fi booster for the bus so we can upload our videos a lot faster when we're on the road like this. So that's nice. Um, and I should be finishing up here tomorrow and then heading to the next stop. Um, trying to find out uh, if my next client has his parts or not. So I might have to skip him and go on to someone else. Uh, so anyways, uh, follow us on our Patreon too. Uh, we also added a, uh, Instagram this week. I'll put a link to that too. If you want to follow us on our Instagram, we're trying to post at least one cool picture every single day. That's, that's kind of my own personal goal for that. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but you can follow us on Instagram as well. Thank you very much. All right. So that boat is done for me. Uh, somebody else is going to need to tackle a few other issues with it. Uh, the synchronizer is not right. There's, it's missing a throttle cable to one of the engines. Um, got super lucky today, as you'll see in the video. Uh, last night, the end of the video, you saw the engine running and heard it. It sounded so good on the port engine. It was perfect. Everything was great about it. Come in this morning, I was just going to start it one time, put the valve cover back on it, be done with it. And I just 
thank God I looked at the uh, the Davco, the Fuel Pro, the fuel filter that's on there. It's got that clear dome on the side. And I look at it and it's not like 10% fuel, 90% water. I was like, oh man, I, I, if we would have run it for another 30 seconds last night, it would have had water all through it. I, I don't know how. So then you'll see as you, in the video what we end up going through today, uh, taking care of that issue. But uh, just really dodged a bullet on that one. Uh, thank God for those Davco fuel filters where you can see like that and, and that I just happened to take the time to look at it this morning before I started. Uh, you know, we drained the water from them yesterday. There was almost no water in them, so I wasn't worried about it. Uh, it's just, it was a crazy thing. So anyways, at the end of the video, you get to see both engines running at the same time. Uh, there is still an issue with the port engine uh, not circulating water. Uh, so it probably needs... Um, some work done with that but I, I don't do any of that stuff so the impeller or something like that is is done or she had a diver going to the boat and they checked it and said that it's not plugged up anywhere um but that was last year so maybe between now and then it, something's got worse so anyways uh enjoy the video i'm done and uh heading to my next job thank you look at all the water in the fuel filter now that would be water that would be fuel there's one container of water out of the fuel filter okay so I've hooked up a pump to the tank that's all water so far in a five gallon bucket see how long before it changes the diesel It's about four gallons of water still. Tiny, just a few drops of diesel in the middle. After removing over 10 gallons of water, this is now what's coming out of the diesel fuel tank. Well, this is just water. This is water mixture, and the fuel is just that little bit at the very top. It's gonna let it sit here, and it'll continue to settle out. So, there's a lot of water in this tank. So I was worried about the, with as much water was in that filter, the water got into the engine. We shut it off last night, it was running fine. So I think we were really lucky I had to look at that filter. Um, so I'm sucking all the fuel out of it, and right now there's no water, it's just fuel that's come out of the engine, so that's good. But I'm just I'm getting every bit of it out, I'm gonna flush it out a couple times just to make sure there is no water. So I, I disconnected uh, on the pressure side of the fuel pump and, and then I'm sucking from the return, the fuel return right now. So it's just, everything's coming through the, the heads and getting all the fuel out. So luckily it's just fuel that's come out. I was just worried there was gonna be water in there that that was gonna look like what we've been getting. That's been sitting for a few minutes, but it's still extremely high water content fuel. So we're gonna throw a hose all the way down to the bottom of the tank from the outside from the, from the fill so we can get to the very bottom of the tank because the pickup tube doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So there's gonna be water there no matter what. So we gotta get that out. So I'm gonna tie a, a big bolt to the end of a hose and throw it all the way down to it so that it weights down to the bottom, run the pump on it and get it all that water out of it that we can. But I'm happy that this is fuel that's in the engine. I was very worried about that. Okay, so we've drained the whole fuel system, purged everything through. The filter now is filled with fresh fuel. We have it feeding off of this five gallon can instead of from the tank. Can it turn? No. Okay. So I'm gonna hold it in the off position. I, I 
disconnected all the lines, stuck it into the fuel can, ran the pump to circulate new fuel all through the head. So it should all be primed with new fuel, but I'm still gonna let it circulate some of that fuel through just to make sure.
it's done. Um, I actually think that the port side engine is moving water now. You'll see that when it starts with the two of them running together at the same time. Uh, I think so. I think we're good with that. Um, but yeah, there's still a few issues to go through. Uh, but uh, again, I'm done here. Thanks for watching this series. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not going to get into boats. Don't worry about that. But uh, every once in a while, if somebody's got a two-stroke uh, old-school mechanical Detroit diesel, then uh, maybe I'll be able to fit them in my schedule and help them out. It was, it was fun. It, it wasn't hard. I didn't have to jack anything up. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. Uh, special thanks to our Patreon supporters. I really appreciate uh, you guys. We got over 50 Patreons right now. And um, if, if you're looking to do like a one-time donation to us, you can do that through PayPal at the scott at buscreasemonkey.com. Uh, Patreon is an ongoing monthly thing, but if you want to do a one-time donation to our channel, you can do that. Uh, again, scott at buscreasemonkey.com. We would definitely appreciate that. Uh, and I'm going to head to our next stop and hope you guys check out our next video. Thank you. All right, I'm going to give you an update on Pam's boat. If you remember, that had the twin 671 uh, turbos in it and uh, she sent me a message with an update that she said the divers go down and scrape the bottom and she swears that it's sitting an inch higher in the water now that all the stuff's been scraped off the bottom on it and kind of another startling find on it is that they noticed that the props were not properly attached to the shafts and had she have tried to drive the boat drive is that the word whatever taking the boat out <laughs> um they probably would have fallen off and that would have been very, very bad and, and costly. So they're going to address that issue. And then she's ordered all the parts for everything that she needs to do uh, for the impellers and to get all the freshwater system straightened out on there too. So she's making great progress on it and getting ready to get it so it can go out and, and move under its own power and get it moved to a marina closer to her home. Uh, so that's just a little update note that she sent me. And uh, she said she was been bragging to everybody about how while the engine was running and uh, she was happy you know, that we caught that stuck injector that would have caused it to run away, which had it made it run away before for the previous owner. So uh, that was just a nice little update to hear from her.